I have bad days. Not only do I have bad days, I also have sometimes mundane days. And when I'm having a bad day or a mundane day, I often don't consider the needs of other people. Oftentimes, I consider and am worried about me and no one else. I go from task to task or from work project to work project or from event to event, not really engaging in the needs of other people. During Jesus' ministry, Jesus said this, that he came to, to not be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Think about that for a minute. Jesus, who is king over all creation, did not seek to be served, but came to serve. As a result of him coming to serve, you and I have life in the Father, in Jesus. Because he suffered and died and God raised him again on the third day, you and I are able to have a relationship with the Father. We have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light. We've been given freedom from our sin and our rebellion. And in that freedom we live. The Apostle Paul says that that very freedom wasn't given to us so that we could serve our own desires and pleasures, but that we would serve one another in love. The Apostle Paul also talks about in 1 Corinthians 12 that you and I as believers are made up as a body, one body. And as a body, we've been given different gifts. Just like we have different hands, we have two hands and we have two feet and we have a neck and we have a head and we have a nose. Each of those parts of our body help our body function healthily. When we don't have one of those parts, our body is weak and unhealthy. But because of God's Spirit in us, God has given to us gifts to serve one another and our community and the kingdom of God. But where do we start? How do we serve? Well, because you have God's Spirit, God has given you a gift to serve His church. In 1 Corinthians 12, He tells us a little bit about those giftings and how those giftings work for our common good. But I think sometimes there's a bigger question to be asked. And that is, as we come to fellowship with one another and worship with one another, or as you're at the grocery store or you're hanging out with friends or you're doing life with your family, asking people around you, how can I serve you? Now, they're going to be shocked by this, and they're not probably no, going to all necessarily know how to answer or want to answer. And so discern how you can serve. You know, God's created you, and God's created you with a personality and with things that you enjoy. And he's gifted you in various ways to serve his kingdom. So I want to encourage you this week, think about asking your husband or your wife or your kids or a friend, or, or a fellow church member that maybe you've been concerned about or that you want to serve, ask them, how can I serve you? And if they don't give you a way to serve them, maybe you send them a text message or get, give them a phone call and tell them you're praying for them and ask, how can I pray for you? Because we're here to serve one another. When we partner together under the reign of Jesus to serve one another, we're better. Because the Spirit is at work among us when we serve one another.